We're back with the Executive Vice President and CEO of the National Rifle Association, Wayne LaPierre. Welcome. Let me start Thank with you, where John. we were with Donald Trump on this question of anybody who wants to purchase a gun who happens to be on one of these federal right. lists. Is there any space between you and Donald Trump and what worries you about legislation on that? Let, let, let me set it in context in terms of what I think we're facing this past week. I mean, we all mourn for what happened, John. But we faced a terrorist challenge where they're on the verge of overwhelming us. What happened uh, this past week is the president, the whole gun ban movement said, hey, don't look at terrorists. Look over here. Divert your attention. Take your eyes off the problem because they don't want to face the embarrassment of their failure in this terrorist area and they want to cover their butts and not talk about it. You can't save the country with politics. The politically correct policy of the White House are intruding right now in military, terrorism, law enforcement. It's all being politicized with the politically correct White House nose and fingers in areas they don't belong. And that's, now let's start with a terrorist watch list. Let me, uh, we'll address some of those claims in a minute, but just quickly on this question of you and Donald Trump, you're in the same place on this issue? You know, Donald Trump, as far as I know, he wants to attack criminals, he wants to protect the law abiding, and he wants to attack ISIS and get the bad guys, and that's that's where we are. If you, if a person's on a watch list, whether a no-fly or terror watch list, what should their what should the yeah. policy be? You know, let me talk about the watch list. I have never seen so much misinformation and poorly researched stories the last week as that, as, as we've seen. What happens on the watch list? People forget law enforcement set it up. They set it up exactly the way they wanted it. Federal law enforcement. NRA didn't take the guy's name off the list. The federal government did, FBI did, largely because of some of these political correct policies that I, that I think I've been talking about earlier. Here's what would have happened if they left him on the list. Mm -hmm. People don't understand this. There would have been a ping going to the federal government. They would have talked to the guy but actually put his name on the list. There would have been a three-day delay. During that delay, if the government wanted to stop it, they could go to court. They could stop it. What law enforcement wants to do 90% of the time, 99% of the time, is let it go through. They want to watch it. They want to build a case. They want to build patterns. FBI Director Comey said that he didn't want an outright ban because that would blow a lot of their criminal investigations. But you also don't want terrorists with guns in their hands, right? Nobody wants terrorists with guns. So what's but the accommodation we can find here? The accommodation is the Cornyn Bill, which does exactly what law enforcement set up it codifies the whole thing. If, if somebody's on the list, tries to buy a gun, there's a delay. Law enforcement immediately gets on it. If they want to stop it, they go to a judge. They've got oversight. They, don't, they have to do it right away because the minute you do delay, you're tipping off the bad guy. And it, it provides due process for the good people, and it gives law enforcement the ability where they can conduct these investigations, and it won't blow what they're doing. 